By the rock star. Da, 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 da. I don't know why I want to put some noise. Uh, am I, can you hear me, Lisa Paul? No, actually, no, I just talk a little louder. I can barely Can you hear me, Lisa Paul? Yes, much better. Okay, 
Yeah, much better. I think my mic is becoming old. Blah, blah, blah. But anyways, uh, we welcome all of our friends who have joined us this evening for the Saturday Live. Uh, very welcome, Crystal. Very welcome, Ernest. Arpon in the house. My goodness, if anybody else is there, do comment in the comment section. We get to go. And uh, but anyways, having said that, uh, we welcome all of you guys uh, for this live stream. Joseph Williams in the house. Wow. Uh, so thank you so much, Joseph, for joining us. Thank you so much, Veronica, for joining us. And uh, as always, uh, as you know, if you're watching it right now or if you're watching it sometime in future, maybe the first time in this our YouTube channel, then guys, this is GPM India. And uh, what we do is we try to spread the message of the theology of the body all across India and different schools, parishes, if possible, colleges. Uh, and every Saturday, we used to meet at Sacred Heart Church uh, in the evening to learn more about the topic and share more. But due to the pandemic, we cannot go outside, and therefore, we thought this would be the best time to make use of. Uh, this YouTube platform, and therefore here we are. 30, this is our 38th live stream, and we are so, so, so blessed to have uh, this blessing that we can share the message straight from our houses. So, anyways, uh, having said that, we have an amazing speaker for the day. So, Lisa Paul, any guesses? Who do we have? This is like a super international speaker. Yeah. Like a super international speaker. Any All guesses? All the way from the cold places. <laughs> yes, and the best part is she's Chinese. That's the best. Who is an, yeah, she's Chinese, who is an Indian, but lives in Canada. Oh, this is global. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So here we have three, two, two. I think Ashwin also wears some chashma because the person has a chashma. Yes, three. No, you've got a cap. It's fine. Yes, Toby. Three, two, one. Da 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 da. Diana so Lane. Oh my goodness. Talk so the, much. She's always the one who posts. But take it today. Lisa oh, Paul stole her job. You got promoted. Today, today we switch places. <laughs> Yes, I people were tired looking at you. <laughs> like your your face is way too good to watch every day. My face, you, yeah, But anyways, that's uh, sad. Yeah, that's sad. But, you should. <laughs> Thank but you, very anyways. very humble to be here, and what a privilege to join. Thank uh, you so much, uh, this is after after a long time. Yeah. Anyways, let's begin the session. And to all of our viewers, if uh, if you're viewing for the first time or even if you're viewing for the long time, uh, just to let you know that please ask questions. Okay, like we have brought an international speaker, like so international, she's been to so many different three three different countries. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> yeah, but she's an amazing speaker. And please do ask questions. Like this is for a JTM team. I'm sure you would like to share some things by commenting in the comment section. So we give each of you. 20 minutes to our speakers to share on a particular topic. I will not reveal the topic. Uh, let, I'll allow Daniela to repeat her own topic. And after 15 to 20 minutes, after she finishes her session, we will be taking up questions. Uh, if you don't have any questions, we'll ask our own questions. Because, uh, I am the lost author then. So I got another lost person. So we are all we, we have a lot of questions. So but please do ask questions in the comment section if you do not understand something or if you have to repeat something to us and uh, we also take up some questions in the comment section if there are none we will ask questions so over to you Daniel. thank you <laughs> thank you so much sonu and lisa for having me i'm really happy to be here so the topic uh, which I will be sharing on today is the sacrament of anointing of the sick in the light of theology of the body. I think the sacrament of anointing of the sick, uh, whoever is watching, do know or have heard about what the sacrament is a little bit, but does not really know uh, or have maybe witnessed this, this sacrament, this particular sacrament, just like me. Uh, the sacrament was... Uh, like a mystery sacrament to me and until you know i never knew anything about it i i just know it's one of the 
a seven sacrament in the church when I was uh, back in um, catechism classes. I we learned about it, but really no one emphasized on it so much until uh, I got this. Um, I got the chance to share this uh, topic with you guys. And also, until I actually got to witness this uh, anointing of the sick, as you all know that my grandfather have uh, passed away and uh, he was uh, hospitalized for um, about two weeks. And uh, being a man of faith, uh, we as a family thought it was best for him to receive the last sacrament, the anointing of the sick, because he was he was uh, ill and he wasn't doing that well. So, yeah, uh, and that sacrament, I expected something big to happen that day, but uh, it, was, it was just like a striking experience, you know, it's, it's not like any other sacrament that uh, we ha I have witnessed personally, like, for example, I've witnessed sacrament of baptism, been a part of communion, uh, and even confirmation and also witness the sacrament of marriage. But for this particular sacrament, I was stoked and shocked that you, you, you didn't need any books or any prior training or reading in order to receive the sacrament. In fact, uh, Father just came and just gave the anointing and it felt like there was something needed to be done even for us, even though we were not receiving the sacrament, it felt like, okay, we, we need to do something. But there was there was nothing that really needed to be done. In fact, the priest just walked in and uh, yeah, he carried a small jar with him uh, where the blessed holy oil was uh, kept and he had a Bible. And um, yeah, he, he, he prayed over my grandfather and blessed his hands and his head and uh, just you know kept a minute of uh, silence and a minute of minute of prayer entrusting his life and health to Christ and uh, to my surprise there was no magic formula to ensure a successful recovery or uh, be waiting for a miracle but it was yeah it was it was not, not like a magic formula so it was there was just a complete silence and peace in handing this over to the Lord, in the priest handing this over to the Lord, this this moment and the situation, knowing that the church was praying for my grandfather and uh, was with my grandfather. And through this experience, uh, this it highlights something of particular importance about all the sacraments that that we've uh, been through and read through that you know all of them are never earned or deserved all the sacraments for example if if you go to baptism it, it was like a blessing and a gift to, to enter in the sac in the into the sacrament of baptism because we were just newborns and we 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 didn't know anything about sac uh, the uh, baptism of sacrament, but we got we got baptized into the uh, Catholic Church. So yes, all the sacraments are never earned, or we never deserve them. But in fact, they are given to us, and we, as Catholics, as Christians, as followers of Christ, are called to receive them. And in order to properly disposed, to be properly disposed to receive the sacraments, like for example, uh, how a teacher would uh, go through different trainings, go through different courses, different degrees in order to be a service to uh, children, to be a good teacher to children. The teacher would go through prior training, through courses, through everything. In the same way, in order to actually be properly disposed uh, to receive the sacraments. We have, we attend classes, right? I, I'm sure all of you have attended classes uh, prior to your sacraments, which whichever one you've received up till now. And uh, yeah, we go through books, we learn more about the faith. And uh, yeah, we typically 
prepare for them and spend time in prayer. But in these events of preparation, even though we have prepared ourselves so much or got A's in everything or, you know, have by hearted everything, all the uh, uh, sacraments and stuff, you know, this doesn't guarantee that we will receive the sacrament. They don't make the sacrament happen. No matter how much you've studied, no matter how much uh, you think you know or knowledge you've gained, they don't make the sacrament happen. Even if you prepare the sacrament beautifully, what comes up to the, to the end is you standing before God and uh, having our hands open wide and surrendering everything to him. And he, on the other hand, offers us what he has to offer us. That's what, in the end, it, it matters. And uh, so the sacrament of anointing of the sick is basically a response, a, a, a unique response to our love to God and his love for us. And, and it's, it's, it's just beautiful how uh, the sacrament of anointing of the sick is just a response to God our love, showing our love to God in a different and a unique way where we are unprepared and sometimes not stable. Uh, think about your families or uh, even uh, people you know, relatives you know, who, who have greatly suffered in times of illness, injuries, where uh, your family had, had to call the priest to uh, anoint them. Like, it's, it's just beautiful how uh, in these times of suffering, we know that we need God in our lives and we give him everything. And uh, yes, this sacrament is particularly, particularly received uh, during a time of suffering. Uh, suffering can also not only be illness, but also uh, it can refer to old age, or uh, any upcoming surgery where you know people do know people people just are not certain about what's going to happen next so it is a reminder that in our suffering we are invited to stand before god and offer him what we have everything our brokenness our pain our questions and our anxiety, our depression, everything that we have, and just allowing ourselves to receive what he offers us. However, even in the times of suffering like this, often uh, we, we do pray to God or you know expect God to do something in our lives that would turn our lives around or you know make the situation much better or heal the situation or wait for a miracle and uh, we just wait and see what god has to offer in a time of suffering and we ask you know we sometimes in prayer we ask god what do you have uh, to offer us in our suffering um, obviously, because God is highly invisible, sometimes we can't even feel God. We, we, we don't even know whether he's there or not. So, um, yeah, as human beings, it's, it's natural to go through these questions. And uh, most of us here or people we know would expect, you know, uh, some help coming in uh, physically, materially. But uh, we forget the fact in all these situations that he suffered for and with us on the cross. And with that suffering, it lifts our suffering with him, in communion with him. I, uh, it's like, even like, it, it's just, uh, it's just, it's just sad that we, 
we don't think of anything else. We don't even, it doesn't strike our mind that God gave his only son for us, you know, uh, and he died on the cross for us. And what is the greatest and the biggest thing uh, that could, that he could ever do for us in that moment? And we are invited to unite and join ourselves in our in in Christ's suffering in union with Jesus. Our suffering can bear fruit when we join our suffering with Jesus. Jesus' is suffering, and this is strengthened in the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. Uh, so I'll just uh, quote something that uh, says from the uh, is is said in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, which is by the grace of the sacrament, the sick person receives the strength and the gift of uniting himself more closely to Christ's passion. I mean that that that's beautiful. If you are a person who wants to be so close to Jesus, there is nothing more beautiful than being so close to him in his suffering, in being with him, in his passion. And uh, yeah, in a certain way, he, he is consecrated to bear fruit by conflagration to the Savior's redemptive passion. I'm, I'm reading this out, okay? So because it's from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, so um, I don't want to put in my own words or anything i would just straight read it from the book yeah so by the grace of the sacrament the sick person receives the strength and the gift of uniting himself more closely to christ's passion in a certain way he is consecrated to bear fruit by configuration to the savior's redemptive passion suffering a consequence of original sin acquires a new meaning it becomes a participation in the saving work of Jesus. This, this, this line is really beautiful. That acquires a new meaning. Suffering when joined with Christ's suffering gives a new meaning to life. It helps you look at things differently and in a more positive way. And it helps you to embrace your suffering even more deeply. And yeah, it's, it's just beautiful. And uh, at first glance, like everybody thinks people who suffer or uh, people who are old or have any kind of illness, we all look, look down on them. You know, we degrade a person's dignity and, you know, just make them feel as if uh, they were not, they weren't important in society because uh, they can't give anything to us, you know? Uh, yeah. If, if you uh, reflect upon the times where you've, uh, personally, I have also uh, not respected people who are different from us, who, who, who needs, you know, special help, who, who has a particular illness or even uh, old age, we tend to, you know, degrade the person's dignity, making, making him less than what he was before. But uh, St. John Paul II beautifully answers this uh, when he, he visited a place in United Kingdom uh, during, his, uh, during his time as a pope. And, he, and he, he said that there is no force or power that can block God's love for you. No force at all. And uh, sickness and suffering seem to contradict all that is worthy, all that is desired by man. And yet, no disease, no injury, no infirmity can ever deprive you of your dignity as children of God, as brothers and sisters of Christ. And he says this so beautifully that, you know, there's, there's nothing that could ever uh, show your worth other than you knowing it yourself that you are a child of God. Although our culture constantly tells us that uh, by being ambitious, by achieving certain things in life, by getting certain things in life, 
our dignity, you know, goes uh, a step higher. The more you accomplish, you are more recognized. Yes, you are sure, but uh, in that way, you are kind of degrading the person who 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 can't do what you can do, right? So the the, the important thing that St. John Paul II reminds us is uh, no matter what, like nothing and no one can take away the fact that you are a child of God. And uh, the next thing we come up to is, uh, which everybody is facing through right now in this time of pandemic, where uh, a lot of people I know who are suffering, who, who've lost to their loved ones. The most common question they face in this time of suffering is why? You know, why is this happening to me particularly? And uh, what is allowing this to happen? What is causing this to happen? And uh, the sacrament which we are talking about today, the anointing of the sick, by giving this, this, this sacrament reminds us that no matter how bad things may seem, even if you can't understand it, even if you can't fathom the fact of uh, everything what's going around you, one thing remains is evil and suffering do not have power over us. Christ became man and redeemed suffering. In fact, not only does God not impose suffering on us, he enters suffering with us. I mean, what's more beautiful than that, having our God who created us to be with us in that times of suffering. It's just amazing. And Jesus walks with us throughout, till the end, uh, until eternal life. And this sacrament also reminds us of the dignity of the human person. As we speak of a theology of the body, which uh, emphasizes, emphasizes on how both the body and soul is beautiful. And uh, yeah, the same thing is like the sacrament. This sacrament reminds us of the dignity of the human person, body and soul, and the deeper meaning of human suffering. That we see both body and soul of the person receiving the sacrament are valued and truly that the one cannot be separated from the other. Like even in the time of suffering, both body and soul are together. And uh, yeah, when the, when the priest comes to bless the person who's suffering, he does not only particularly bless the body or uh, especially bless the soul of the person, but knowing that the body and soul defines the human dignity, the priest blesses the whole self of a person. And again, as St. John Paul II said, the sacrament is for the benefit of the whole person. And uh, yeah, anointing of the sick is a sacrament that are given to those who, who are suffering and uh, remind us of a truth we often try to hide, that ultimately we are not in control. Uh, I know it might seem so hard to always uh, want to have control over things, want to have power over things, but this uh, anointing of the sick reminds us of the fact that it, the, how much we want to be controlled, we, we, we ultimately are not in control. And most of us would not choose to be sick or to suffer. And yet our illnesses and injuries can be incredible teachers. Even the illness and injury of others can help to form us. As St. John Paul II, uh, I would like to conclude. Uh, this is a very beautiful line that he says. He says that do not neglect your sick and elderly. Do not turn away from the handicapped and the dying. Do not push them to the margins of society. For if you do, 
you you will fail to understand that they represent an important truth the sick the elderly the handicap and the dying teaches that weakness is a creative part of human living and that suffering can be embraced with no loss of dignity and it it's very true like who says that if you suffer you become less of a person only if only if we knew how to embrace our suffering with Christ is suffering it it's it's just going to be a, a different perspective that we'll look at and 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 actually feel feel about our suffering without the presence of these people in your midst you might be tempted to think of health strength and power he continues to say st john paul ii um as the only important values to be pursued in life but the wisdom of christ and the power of christ are to be seen in the weaknesses of those who share in his suffering so basically st john paul ii reminds us that uh no matter at what stage we are at in life every person still deserves you know the basic uh, human dignity and uh, no one and nothing can take that away from them and we we ne- we need to teach the the whole world what what love is right now i mean uh, it it's it's sad like if you go through the news every day and uh, in this times even when we're called to be kind to each other to be loving to each other to be loving and helping our neighbors we still see people taking disadvantage of this this particular situation where people still want to be in control of things still want to take charge of things and uh, still want power i wouldn't mention uh, the situation i mean like the different um news that i've seen but yeah it's it's heartbreaking that people think of making money in this time uh than offering help to each other and uh, so yes to read through through the, the through, uh, through the sacrament of anointing the sick in john paul ii reminds us that in this in this suffering that jesus is with us and uh it might seem you know blurry and it might seem that there is no light at the end of the tunnel but um, all this suffering ultimately is going to be and going to bring glory to god and uh, yeah in the suffering in this time of suffering we are called as christians and as catholics we are called to serve and be of service to others and the uh, last thing is not only do the sick and suffering teach us how to love but they also reveal in part how god loves us allowing our earthly struggles to become a means of conformity with him leading to union with him in heaven so ultimately our goal in life is to be a saint to be holy so yes do not uh, hesitate to love people around you do not be scared because if you believe in god like if you take care of his things his people he'll take care of your your things and your people so yes that was it thank you sonu are you there Yes, thank you so much Danielin that was uh, such an amazing sharing sharing from the heart uh what it, it was really amazing and uh, I think we've been talking about sacraments for quite some time now and uh, we've learned so much through these past couple of weeks and we've learned that uh love and graces of God is to be received and uh, even though we don't receive it yet uh, god wants to give us more and more yet often we, we hear a lot of things that's right oh 
होलीनेस इज मेंट फॉर ओनली फॉर टीओपी पीपल भाई हमसे नहीं हो पाएगा नहीं भाई हमसे नहीं हो पाएगा ट्रूफ्ट um for 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 everybody's information me and sonu sitting right here were not born out of the womb holy <laughs> okay for for a reason we are here today because we believe in something and uh, we've gone through things and uh, in fact i think i believe me sonu and myself both have both of us have had experiences where we also had the same questions about i can never be holy that's not for me it's fine stay away but it's it's just that it needs um, an openness of your heart unless i i remember this line always from a good friend of mine who always says this unless you want it it won't happen unless you want it to happen it won't happen unless you want to encounter christ and know more about christ unless you deep inside want it in your heart it's not going to happen So yes um so no I think I got off a mood away from the question what was the question again like <laughs> like anyways uh, I know who that person is but anyways uh like many people say you know like uh, holiness is not meant for me all the good things is not meant for me I don't know why to go to church god will never like you know that stuff like that but we know the sacraments we are supposed it's freely given even though we don't deserve it none of us deserves mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. so how can you motivate my friends uh, who are watching right now who may have such kind of uh, thoughts in their minds oh god is not meant for me oh holiness is not meant for me oh this is not chastity to be only for them all these gifts not meant for me god will never give me all these gifts so how could you motivate them to receive the gift of god yes like i said openness of your heart and acceptance of the message um and also we are all called to be holy uh it's not only a uh, few chosen people like you know god did not like have a wand in his hand and go like okay so is going to be holy tyne is going to be holy and uh, franklin is not going to be holy <laughs> sorry franklin <laughs> but yeah uh we are all irrespective of all we've gone whatever we've gone through in life we are all meant to be holy and uh, strive to be a saint uh, even today we all all of us who 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 you know in the ministry in in theological body jtm st john paul ii uh, messengers who have been with us in encounters all know that we are not perfect we are young we we want to change the world but at the same time we still make mistakes we still suffer from things that we find hard to let go and we have our weaknesses but that is not stopping us to carry on with our faith that is not stopping us to still spread the message that is not stopping us from receiving the sacraments even in the time of pandemic we are still striving we are still together so yes if if you want to make a change today you got to do it if if you think that the circle you're with is not helping you to be holy then find another circle you know help yourself to be holy and uh, find people that would walk with you in this journey of holiness who will who will run with you in this journey of holiness and and not you know bring you down or uh, take you away from that pathway because ultimately earth is just a pilgrimage we are going through our ultimate destination is heaven so yes wow thank you so much danielin our next we'll even lisa paul has a couple of question and thank you for reminding that i will be going to happy when will it happen <laughs> i'm Lisa. still waiting but anyway lisa paul has a couple <laughs> yeah, of questions have patience to go to heaven and now this to you may never know <laughs> yeah so dina your uh, session was amazing um 
kind Thank of you. cleared a lot of my questions though about sacrament of the anointing. Um, mm -hmm. So a couple of questions I had in mind. Um, you know, when we talk about the sacrament of uh, anointing of the sick, uh, mostly people take anointing of the sick to be, um, I mean, suffering to be as a negative aspect. You know, uh, so can can suffering be positive also? Like, can we look at suffering in a positive manner rather than looking at it at, as a negative uh, aspect of life? Yes. So I think this has much connection with the first question that, um, you know, if you do not understand the value of the sacraments and uh, if you do not think that you can be holy, you can strive to be holy, you can strive to be a saint. Then in connection with your question, you're asking me right now, whether you can see suffering as a positive or a negative positive. thing. Um, yeah, so you would always have a negative mindset if you, if you do not have an openness of heart to receive Jesus. But if you do understand the sacraments, the church, it becomes more easier for you to embrace suffering. If we, if we knew the value of Jesus dying on the cross for us, and we are closest to him in our suffering, that we can join our suffering to Jesus' suffering on the cross, then we will learn how to, how to look at suffering in a more positive way and how to embrace the suffering that we face we are facing through any situation right. so yes uh, but again like different people have different views and uh, some people take a negative way some in a positive way but yes uh, like i said if we only understand and understood what jesus did on the cross for us we would be able to embrace our suffering it's not easy it's not easy i'm not saying yes. that if you know that Jesus died on the cross, it'll be easy for you to embrace your suffering, but uh, it makes it, it eases your suffering, knowing that our creator is with us. Right. So, yes. Also, um, another question. Uh, Am I getting like, stuck? Take in the question. Yes, <laughs> a little. No. You are going <laughs> into super I slow think. motion. The video, I think, the voice. Yeah, I feel my internet is lagging. Just, just give me one second. Sure. One second over. <laughs> she said one minute. Achha, achha. We can take a screenshot of this. And it could become a meme. <laughs> Anyways. There are no comments in the comment section. Hello. As of now. Yes. Glad yes, to have you back, Danielin. You froze for a couple of seconds. Okay. He wanted to make Please, you a uh, meme. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I haven't taken uh, a look at this current situation, like the pandemic and um, the people that are suffering around physically, mentally. I know. So um, is it possible for someone who is... Uh, having you know being diagnosed expect <laughs> what i think, I think she's she getting our audio a little late so our joke came while you were speaking something serious <laughs> should i continue i mean i don't know how far yeah yeah, yeah. Heard me. continue 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 the question and let's see if don't stop. Yeah. Oh, I can Dana, hear you. I you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The joke is echoing. Okay. So she has vanished finally. Uh, I was wondering why did she laugh suddenly? Yeah, exactly. But anyways, uh, this COVID situation think, uh, has been quite difficult, don't you? thing please of all so yeah. just wanted to ask you a question how are you coping up with the situation and uh, what are the couple of things that you're doing in your family right now to you know to stay positive right now um personally i have just uh, i mean my family my mom was dealing with it um, so it was pretty difficult for us to 
hope i mean to even think of anything that was positive to be honest because you know it uh, i feel this situation has kind of tested the spirituality and the trust uh, that we have with god you know i mean personally this is what i feel uh, everybody else's feelings and uh, situations can be different but uh, what i what i was reading uh, you know i was reading genesis and it i came across um when 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 god was so upset when adam and eve left um you know i mean not left uh, when they disobeyed and uh, god was so upset so you know at at that time also he didn't like kind of shun them away but at the end he also there's a line that says as a verse that says that he clothed them with animal skin so even at your worst god doesn't leave that's what we and that's what i understood during this phase of time that no matter what the suffering is um, it takes time to uh, understand and to accept that and once you accept it and know that he is not going to leave you he's still there on your boat uh, it becomes a little easy well so that's hope. really yeah. yeah that's really amazing uh, i think daniel in his back so we can continue with our yes, questions no i am so sorry i think my laptop was getting overloaded <laughs> with things so it got it was like lagging a little bit and yeah I, i was using my laptop today because my phone battery is really bad so right now i'm just charging my phone and actually doing the live but anyway oh, sorry. sorry about that <laughs> oh, that's okay okay is is the internet clearer now yes it's much better i can hear you ah great great so um i don't know if you heard the question so i will repeat my question again um okay like during the situation like the pandemic is going on and people are falling yes. sick so is it possible that when someone is diagnosed with covid-19 uh, to be able to receive the anointing of the sick yes yes i mean of course like uh, like i mentioned how my grandfather was sick but mm-hmm. uh, yeah he follows uh just just want to clear out he wasn't sick with covid <laughs> it was just because oh. he was 92 years old so yeah um yeah he was he was sick and uh, definitely if you have the uh, correct precaution if you take the correct pre- uh, precautions and uh, the the different equipments that you use to protect yourself mm-hmm. face shield gloves uh, your mask or yeah why not i mean like office obviously i mean if even if the hospital allows you i'm sure they i don't know india but oh here they allow they allow a uh, priest to visit even family members to visit but uh, like two at a time or one at a time so yes i think no situation can really not allow someone to ha- receive any sacrament uh, i believe yeah that i think even uh, even uh, in the time of uh, covid uh during easter i have witnessed again the baptism the the sacrament of baptism been given to people it's just is the new thing now we just have the mass and all the face covering and gloves and sanitizing so as long as those are available uh, i don't see what could stop uh, receiving the sacrament what could stop us from receiving the sacraments yeah right mhm Well, thank you so much, uh, for Lisa Paul, for reminding. But maybe just to get, uh, rephrase the question again, and because someone had asked as well, uh, specifically on the anointing of the sick, if somebody is diagnosed with, go is somebody is COVID positive and feels that, uh, you know, they need, uh, to have the anointing of the sick, is is it being allowed, or uh, mm-hmm. by the church to give? That's what they wanted to know. I think uh, the church will never stop a person from receiving a sacrament and uh, that is one thing which I know and if I'm not sure anointing of I... the sick yeah yes okay. yes sorry the sacrament <laughs> yeah no issues uh I, I don't think so the only thing that would stop them is hospital authorities mm. that's the only thing if they 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 think that it's it's not safe and it's gonna you know harm other people spread spread the virus even more then that could be a barrier or else uh, so no what do you think 
Well, but anyways, uh, it depends from uh, yeah. place to place, and I've been re- it depends from diocese to diocese. Um, yeah. In couple of dioceses, uh, in India, in many of the hospitals, they are not allowing anybody to visit COVID positive mm. patients inside. So what some of them are doing is some of the doctors are very, really very nice. Uh, like one of my friend, uh, he recently passed away. Uh, and I was so feeling upset, but uh, they were allowing him to use phones, so they allow you to uh, receive this anointing of the sick through uh, okay. virtual platforms. Uh, oh. They like you know, I was watching one of the videos where the nurses uh, switched on the laptop, logged in through Google Meets, and the yeah. priest uh, was giving the last final things to uh, through the virtual platform because in India right now they're not allowing. But if they allow, but if at home or something. Uh, it depends from diocese to diocese uh, at the moment for this COVID-19 situation. Some places I know they are allowing for the anointing of the sick and the priests are really physically going blessing. But in some places, uh, the priests are avoiding uh, kind of, uh, it's, it's difficult to get a priest for the anointing of the sick, so if specifically if you're COVID positive. It's difficult, but it's not impossible. But anyways, mm-hmm. having said that, uh, we have been talking a lot of, good things and uh, this pandemic and everything and anointing of the sick uh, has a lot ha- automatically it links the theme of suffering to it uh, just out of curiosity Daniel, uh, any saint that comes to your mind whose suffering really inspires you or has really inspired you I think uh, yeah personally all the saints have suffered, but yeah, the one which I really look up to is uh, Saint Chiara Corbella. I don't know if you guys know her, but uh, yeah, she was a she was a mother of uh, three children, two out of which two died when a uh, half an hour after uh, she gave birth to them, and uh, one of them is living, and uh, and sh- and in fact. Kiara, Saint Kiara Corbella uh, died while giving birth to this child, and uh, it's 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 really beautiful because uh, she chose life and she suffered physically. Something something which most people are scared of to suffer physically, and uh, yeah, it takes it takes a lot for a person to go through so much, having lost two children of hers, and um, she was diagnosed with cancer. And she suffered much in order to give bring life and give birth to her uh, son. So yeah, Saint Chiara Corbella. She wow, yeah, that's... she's one of the saints which reminds me. Is she a saint? Canonized saint? Yes, yes. Yet? Yes. Okay. Yes, saint. That's why she's Saint Chiara, right? Okay. Anyways. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh... It I because it was Saint Chiara Corbella. There, there are a lot. I know there's yeah Saint Chiara Corbella and then there's Saint Gianna. There's another Saint Chiara as well. Yeah, I think they all like. Uh, okay, which one inspired you? Yeah, Saint Chiara Corbella. Okay, <laughs> fine. Thank I you so much, Annalyn. Sorry. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. So thank you so much. I I I thought she was a blessed, but uh, anyways. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Daniel. I, I had read her life story and no, it's really me. amazing. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> okay, uh, anyways. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, Daniel, for sharing. And uh, where did Lisa Paul vanish? Yes. Thank you so much, Daniel, for sharing. It was really an honor to have you. Every week we have Thank you, but anyways, <laughs> have you as a speaker? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much uh, for speaking those words of wisdom, sharing your experiences as well as uh, you know speaking from the heart. It really inspi- It's really inspiring, and uh, spent in a very special way when you said that uh, you know never to ignore uh, people who are sick. I think that's something that I would like to take from this session. Uh, not just the sick, but also our parents, elderly during this time mm-hmm. of uh, COVID-19. It must be, you know, it must be, for some parents, I know it's it, they're panicking. And, you know, because mm-hmm. of, 
different situations. So as young people, I, I think this is what really I would like to take back and which I'm really trying to do for since quite some time now. Uh, so to our audience as well, I think they're quite inspired. So thank you so much, Danielin. And uh, we hope to see you again. You will come again, hopefully. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, see you next week, Danielin. All right, yes. bye. Anyways, thank you so much, Tata, and bye-bye. Okay. Yeah, out of, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, Lisa Paul is... What's happening, Lisa Paul? Yes, Lisa Paul is muted. And, and anyways, guys, um, uh, okay, anyways, thank you so much for all of you who have joined us today for the session. And it has been a real blessing to have you here. Please, if you like something, if you have any questions, if you, if you would like to ask or share something, do comment in the comment section. And uh, as always, I would just like to remind you about the call program, which we are beginning from the 29th of May. And uh, this is something that's going to be really amazing. If you haven't signed up yet, do sign up at jtmindia.in slash call. Uh, having said that, stay safe, take care, and hoping to see you next week, same time, same place. Ta-ta, bye-bye.